The Roto Grinders Daily Fantasy Football Podcast is presented to you by Yahoo Sports Daily Fantasy. Make sure you check them out again on Sunday. The baller is back. It's $200,000 and a nice $10 buy-in price point. Remember, if you like to mass multi-enter, you can do it. 150 lineups. You can build them right on Lineup HQ at rotogrinders.com. Welcome back to the Absolutely Epic Early Week Podcast, Week 11. Dean here, that's Dean 7904. If you want to get all tactical on me, uh, usual suspects. First of all, we got Travis Van Gogh, who's a gamer. He's giving it a go. He's not 100%. Uh, he was almost a late scratch. But uh, Travis, we appreciate it. You're going to power through. Your, your, uh, you're not your, the top of your game. Can we say that? Yeah, yeah. Probably not the top of my game. Not feeling the greatest, but we're going to power through. And, uh, you know, if at the end I feel like it, I'm just going to foul myself out and hit the bench. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, we hope that's not the case. What you were saying before the, before the show, you're going to do a little Jordan uh, flu game magic. So maybe maybe you, you close strong. Who the hell knows? Yeah, I'm either going to do the Jordan flu game or I'll just do the Porzingis, man. Like, the game was so bad, we just uh, we just sit that bad boy out. See, that's a good reference. Like if people are listening live, but they're not Mango, and this is a podcast for the NFL for the entire week. And of course, this is the first podcast you listen to in all DFS, not the last, because like, as we said in the title, it's the early week, uh, you know, first look. First, we're just kind of taking a look, taking a look and seeing what's going, going on. Of course, our opinions will change throughout the week. Uh, Grant, Grant Niefer, we're not going to ignore you. What's going on, Grant? You, who says I change my opinions throughout the week? What I give is gold on Mondays. So second well, thing. You you st- <laughs> that's you understand Grant with new information comes new takes and this is Monday and a lot of the things we're basing our takes off on Monday we're recording it right after Monday Night Football congrats to the Seahawks um, you know things may change as the week progresses so you're you're entitled you don't you're not married to your opinion you can change it I'm not going to hold you to it I've never changed an opinion I still think Backstreet Boys the greatest band ever ever since 1994. Well, I don't know. Band is a liberal interpretation of the word. They're musicians, I suppose. It's and literally called mean, a boy they're band. They're a boy band, and that's a great take, by the way, Grant. Well, first of all, uh, I would argue a band has to actually play musical instruments. No? like that's No, not, not a the, boy the band. Ability to <laughs> One would argue that a mouth is a musical instrument. <laughs> I mean, I suppose, sure, but... Uh, One can argue the Beatles were a boy band, and they're one of the greatest bands of all time, arguably, Dean. Man, go, that's the worst take ever. They actually played instruments, the Beatles. Did you not know this? Yeah, but you can argue they're a boy band. You know I mean? They have all... The well, they were same, marketed as yeah, a boy band, like, uh, yeah, exactly. with help or whatever, but they, yeah. they, they became one of the most innovative bands of all time because they progressed over time, and the Backstreet Boys... Never really got out of. Why are we talking about the Backstreet Boys? And also, because, if we're gonna say that we're gonna go down this this road, and Sync is better than the Backstreet Boys, like come oh, on, no, that's not you a conversation. Are, that is ridiculous. The bad Ninety-eight thing. degrees was better than NSYNC. Sync. All right, Nick Lachey. <laughs> I love Nick Lachey. I've met Nick Lachey. I like Nick Lachey too. I want to discuss this. See, I'm curious to hear what your take. What happened with Nick? Yeah, I think he's underrated. And he was, uh, he was, uh, go ahead. He had, he had that. Honestly, his album "What's Left of Me" was. <laughs> Very inspiring and like what? thoughtful after let's his let's... breakup with uh, Jessica Simpson. Sure, let, let's save the let's Good save the Nick Lachey there. story for afterwards when I'm sitting on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> I want to learn more about Nick Lachey. I'm excited about this, but <laughs> unfortunately, I don't want to say unfortunately. We're going to talk some football. Um, we do want to give a shout out, Grant, to, as far as our winner from last week. You know, of course, if you guys answer our question in the little uh, the chat area, you know, in the link on the Rotor Runners page. You have your chance of uh, getting a Roto Grinders T-shirt. And who's our winner this week, Grant? Uh, which one did we decide on? Well, it was a group decision, and uh, well, first of all, the topic was the weirdest concoction of food that you like. It's just sort of weird, and for whatever reason you like it, sell us on it. And you gave the hardest sales pitch for the winner, being Hogger sixty seven, who uh, apparently his wife does not approve of what he eats. So he's kind of got to sneak away and do this on his own time. So when she's sleeping, he's hitting up the uh, the kitchen and putting together a concoction of a uh, cream with butter, brown sugar, and oats, and he eats it raw. So, um, yeah, he's like method man. They're eating that raw. Um, I, I don't know what that's called. I've never, he doesn't give a name for it. It's his I own think it's called diabetes. There you go. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there you, congratulations. Uh, hogger 67 slide into the DMS. Uh, give me your information. We'll make sure you get yourself an RG t-shirt and how can somebody win an RG t-shirt this week? Grant? Um, weird restaurant stories. I think that's what we decided. Was that yeah. what we decided? We had a couple thrown out there, but that works. Sure. Weird restaurant yeah. stories. Yeah, no, this last weekend I was out at a bar on Sunday, and some guy comes up to us, and he's like, 
hey, are you using this chair, which the standard thought is, of course not. You get you can take it over to your table where you need an extra chair. Dude sits down, orders a beer and sandwich. <laughs> That is such a boss power move, you're alpha. <laughs> I respect that so much. Well, I'm like, I, I'm kind of angry because at least he didn't. If he would have said, "Hey, do you mind if I sit here?" That's a little different, different conversation. Yeah. Well, you don't. You can't say no, can you? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, but at least there would be. It would be kind of like, all right, well, we're not going to talk to you. We're having our own conversation. You know what you're getting yourself into when, when you answer the question. Yeah, and then. <laughs> He eats a sandwich and drinks his beer within 10 minutes. It was incredible. <laughs> like, I couldn't even be angry at him afterwards. I'm like, all right, wow. He's efficient. Well, maybe he thought it was awkward you guys weren't talking to him. I mean, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It was, it was, a, it was a crazy scene. Mango, what would you do in this situation? Uh, Mango yeah, is sitting on, on the bench. <laughs> I was on you for a second. I was doing something on my computer, but... <laughs> Oh man. Uh, yeah. So I was, um, yeah, in that situation, I don't know what I would do exactly. I, my weird restaurant stories, I had my waitress quit on me like mid like shift. Like she hated our table so much. She passed us <laughs> off to another waitress. <laughs> that was very interesting. We, we knew the waitress she passed us off to. And it's because I was doing, uh, well, my one friend was kind of being annoying, but I was doing the uh, Buffalo wild wings challenge, right? The wing challenge. And, um, What's that? Oh, you got to eat like 12 of the hottest wings in like three minutes or whatever. Oh, and I was, I was just looking for, you know, the, uh, I was looking for the loopholes, right? I'm just trying to see like what the best scenario is. Like, do I just go right into the wing right away? Or is there a way where I can just like rip all the meat off the wing first, get it all ready to go and then eat all of it? Like, can I do that in a minute and then have two minutes to eat? So like the, uh, the spiciness doesn't bother me. I was just looking for loopholes left and right. And, uh, the waitress basically said, if I did it that way, that I'm not a man and was trying to like, you know, make fun of me for it. And then I basically said, I asked the manager if that was okay and the uh the manager said yeah if you want to do that that's fine and i just said suck it and then i ended up not doing the challenge in time three minutes and like 10 seconds uh, oh. actually it was like three minutes and like four seconds but like i think what happened was the uh, i don't think the manager liked me enough and like he was like oh there's some meat on those bones like i got all of it in my mouth in time but i didn't like swallow it in time it was some garbage you gotta time. eat the grizzle too did you not eat the grizzle uh, no, I don't, I don't think I hate the question. I have, in fact, done this challenge and won, but we should probably get in some football. <laughs> and also, it reminded me of Britt and doing the pizza challenge. Oh, like, you, needed, you, needed, you needed those judges because Britt, they graded on a curve and they gave them. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I, didn't get the, I didn't get the curve. It was, it was frustrating, <laughs> but whatever. Well, don't tell your waitress to suck it. Oh, yeah, that's bad. probably not the best way to get to good service. Um, yeah, let's talk about this slate, boys. Also, I was a big loser last week, if you guys are not aware. Um, yeah, I picked some losers, and you guys are going to have some fun with me later on the show and tweets your consequences. And to be frank, I was a big loser in DFS as well, too, because I made some terrible pivots. And, uh, uh, you know, I, Biff just steered me in the wrong direction, unfortunately. But you know what? It's DFS. All we care about is this week. It's a clean slate. Grant, how do we feel as far as the overview? Because as far as the slate, you know, obviously we should say we only talk about the main slate, the buys we don't care about. So Green Bay, we're not talking about you. The Giants – not talking about you. Seattle, Tennessee as well. Uh, the Thursday night game, Pittsburgh, Cleveland don't care. Monday night, Casey and uh, L.A., the Chargers don't care. Sunday night, of course, they're on the sponsor of the podcast, Chicago, and the Rams are not on for their people. Well, that game is not too appealing either. But as far as the main slate, Grant, we got an 11-gamer. Uh, it's the haves and the have-nots, right? It's pretty clear what the good games are and what the bad games are. Is that correct? I mean, yeah, pretty much. Like, I, I don't know, some of the bad games have some interesting spots. Thinking, I don't know what you refer to as the good games and the bad games. Well, I mean, okay, Mango, let's play a game. <laughs> Jets at Washington, good game or bad game? I mean, game. listen, that's, that's a bad game, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> if this is Willy Wonka and these games are eggs, what shoot are they going down? Um, I mean, this is pretty much the same as the Giants versus the Jets. What happened there? I rostered way too much Saquon Barkley, and now I am homeless. So, yes. Well, you got that one yard. 14 yards after contact. <laughs> I didn't watch that game, but, like, explain to me what 13 carries and one yard looks like. Um, Did getting anybody see this? three yards behind the line of scrimmage every single time. Oh, my God. Yeah, it, it did not go well for your boy. But, Grant, that's, that's a bad game, right? I mean, I understand you can find value, and you don't let just totals dictate your complete thought. But as of right now, like – it's gross, the Jets and Washington, yes? I mean, I like the Jets side. I'm not, not really. I mean, okay. I, like, we've Tell seen these ugly jet. games all year, and we've seen multiple times them turn into 
ridiculous games. I mean, they're, they're, they're two putrid offenses. But, Side note, they're underdogs versus Washington. Yeah, which is hilarious. <laughs> Imagine being an underdog versus Washington. I mean, the, the, you got to find value somewhere if you want to pay it for CMC and his um, 3X every single week. <laughs> well, there is some value uh, potentially because of Atlanta. Uh, we should mention this as well as far as the injuries. Austin Hooper is going to be out for several weeks. At least that's what we're seeing on Monday night. He's got an MCL. And Devontae Freeman, he's got a foot. So he's likely out as well. Uh, so Hooper and Freeman, Brian Hill looks like he might emerge as a value play. Uh, Brita got hurt Monday nights. So kind of stay tuned on that one. And Ty Johnson, of course, he got concussed, uh, concussed last week. And, you know, J.D. McKissick, these aren't the sexiest of names, but they're kind of cheap. We live in the world of a salary cap, and those are the guys that might make things work for you. Um, Mangone, do those names excite you? No, th- those names don't excite me. This, this, <laughs> this, this, this is a really, really Brian nasty. Hill does. No, I mean, yeah, Brian Hill, sure, is like a cheap uh, RB. But, I mean, why are we going out of order here? We're talking Brian Hill and – are we talking J.D. McKissick? Is that the word I heard? We're doing the screenshot. This is the overview, and then we'll go to quarterbacks. Listen, the overview is, like you said, there are some good games, there are some bad games. It's pretty simple. You got Atlanta, Carolina, 54 good. total. Just just go to the totals. Good just egg. look at those. Good it's egg. very simple. Look at Houston, Baltimore, 49 total. Two really good quarterbacks in Watson and Jackson. I think that's a good game. We could definitely like that. Uh, there's there, there's other games like you know Dallas Detroit fifty one and a half that we don't know exactly what the quarterback situation is have to see on that we got another yeah. fifty one uh, in uh, you know we got the Bucks and the Saints uh, there's definitely some crazy pricing that's like actually the big thing to talk about on this slate Dean uh, Michael Thomas's price is up Christian McCaffrey's price is up Lamar Jackson's price is up like you can't just team jam all of them in because it gets really really ugly so I think that, McCaffrey's the same price what are you talking about. That's still an expensive price tag, but like Dean, listen, like if you're telling me I'm getting 27 points, I'm going to take McCaffrey at that price. I know you won't, but I will take 27 points at that price tag. You mean 30? That that conversation was, I mean, look, I this is a callback to a previous conversation, but the idea of like the premise of you can get 27 points, no more, no less out of McCaffrey, and the idea that you need him to win tournaments at 27 points for 10.5k or no, we're talking cash. There's the difference. Green, no, 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 no. The, the the conversation was around tournaments. Great, I have a question for you. Just just a simple question. Um, I think 10 point 10.5k. I'm, I'm giving you 27 points. Are you just taking it and moving on? In tournaments, no. That, that, thank you. Me and Grant are agreeance. Thank you. Okay, but I'm just – I mean, I didn't know if it was cash or tournaments, but listen, Dean. Mango got served. It. No, no, I didn't get served, Dean. You, you, you wouldn't take it at all in cash, too. I, you, that was your argument also. You wouldn't take it at all. No, I'm saying it's you not a lock and lock. That. It's the nature, the nature of the slate. Oh, it's what the slate yeah. dictates. In and the last you, week of slate, I took McCaffrey for 27 points. Two more, no less. In an alternate universe, like Kamara uh, had a really big game and Barkley had a, a really big game. But, you know, we send this out a thousand times and they, they beat McCaffrey a certain percentage. Of course, we only have the one result. It's, you know, it's a one-game sample size and it was an absolute disaster that blew up in my face. And I had some McCaffrey, but I ended up spending down on Barkley as well too because I just, you know, delegated some funds. And, again, the premise of, like, you need to play a tournament guy for 10.5K for 27 fantasy points, no more, no less – to me, that's a flawed premise. And it's a hypothetical you can't do anyway. So what's the point of having that conversation? It's interesting, if nothing else. But um, are we still doing good game, bad game? <laughs> Guess these are pretty. <laughs> Let's move on to quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> I was enjoying the Willy Wonka reference. Um, so much for that. Uh, all right. So we have good quarterbacks, Grant. Clearly good quarterbacks. Ljax is awesome. And as uh, Mangone mentioned, the other side in that game, you know, on the Houston side, you got Watson as well, but they're both a bit pricey. Jackson just run, hit the floor is amazing because, you know, he's, he was going to run for 70 yards. He might get in the box, and you're, you're already basically halfway home. But he's super expensive depending on where you're shopping. He's 7.7K on DK. That's $800 more than the next dude. That's kind of pricey. Uh, 41 on Yahoo. And then let's see if you got to work your way down as far as Yahoo. Mango, as I'm talking to Grant, take a peek at, at Yahoo and see. Uh, give me some value plays over there as far as quarterback. But – you know, Grant, are we prioritizing uh, Lamar, or are you going to kind of work your way down? No, I'm, I'm not playing Lamar. 7700 seems like a ridiculous price tag. He's not He's not Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> who we still struggle. I mean, he has been putting up 30 every single week. Yes, he could potentially do that again, but it's not like there aren't other good options. I mean, you already mentioned it. We have Watson going up against Baltimore on the other side there probably going to put up a big game. We've got Drew Brees for 800 less going Ish. up against Tampa Bay, who we've already seen what Jared Goff put up 500 yards. And this is a spot where, like, Drew Brees, they're a run-first team most of the time. 
they might run a little bit here, but chances are they're probably just passing. Last two weeks, Drew Brees has 40, or last two games, Drew Brees has 40 passing tips. Granted, he hasn't done great in those games, but sometimes it just happens that you just have an off game. Going up against Tampa Bay is literally the perfect get-right spot. Drew Brees should absolutely crush here. We got the Dallas and Detroit game with a very high total, which seems fishy, but, I mean, if Vegas put, is putting it that high, then, like, it, it's got to have some merit to it. And Dak, like, Zeke hasn't been quite the same a lot of this year. Um, so Dak could end up with a massive game this week. We have Jameis Winston. Oh, if you listen real closely, you can hear Van Gogh and typing his blog, but continue. And that's yeah. not me typing. That it was is me not typing. typing. That's <laughs> not typing. It was me typing because the line for Dallas and Detroit just does not make sense to me. And I was double checking it. We don't know because Stafford's questionable, right? So what, what do we have as far as the line? Yeah, it's I'm off Detroit the board. Plus four. Yeah. It's Detroit plus – yeah, that makes sense to me, but the 49 total is what surprises me, um, especially if Stafford doesn't play. Then we got Derek Carr going up against Cincinnati with 30 implied total for Oakland. And Oakland's got, got the biggest team total grant this week. Isn't that wild? Yeah, if I told you at the beginning of the season, Oakland, after AB left, Oakland would be a 10-point favorite against anyone but the Dolphins. Yeah. It would, it, you think twice about it, but if, here we if, are. I, if I told you Oakland was one game out of the division against the Chiefs, you would... hey, is Oakland good, Mango? Are they hashtag good? Uh, hashtag I okay? I, I, very, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how they're pulling They're this one off. of the best coach teams in the NFL, which is ridiculous <laughs> to say after what we saw from Josh Gruden last year, which was nothing short of miraculous coaching in order to tank. But, I but that's, I more, John, that's more exposing the other coaches in the league, I think, than saying Gruden's a great coach. But go ahead. Continue, Mango. Yeah, no, he also called him Josh Gruden. So I'm curious if there's, like, a different guy there pulling the strings. Is it Josh? Josh? Yeah, I think he did. But maybe, maybe I heard it wrong. Who knows? But I thought you said Josh. And you probably mixed up Josh Jacobs and John Gruden together. That's and Jay Gruden all together. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, Dean asked for, like, the uh, Wahoo Yahoo play, right? The, the play that's going to just win you all the money. It's Kyler Murray, right? Uh, if I told you $25, you can buy uh, Gardner Minshew, Kyler Murray, Andy Dalton, or Jared Goff. I mean, it's, it's a pretty easy. Well, you just may go and Gardner Minshew is <laughs> not playing this week, is he? I know he's not. Neither is Andy Dalton, I'm assuming. That's <laughs> okay. why I'm just saying they're $25. It's just like I'm trying to explain, like, Kyler Murray's $25, and two guys who got benched are $25. Like, this is ridiculous. So, um, yeah, Kyler Murray's probably the guy. But if, if there's, like, just an immense amount of value, you're probably just uh, heading over to Lamar Jackson at $41. But uh, you have to have that value kind of come into play. Yeah, uh, condolences to Grant, by the way. He's a big Minshew guy, but, you know, BDN is back. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big, big dick Nick guy. <laughs> well, if you had to choose, you know, Sophie's choice. I'd, I'd choose the one with the larger third leg as opposed to the larger two quads. If they're falling off a cliff, you'd save who first? And what? what, what, what I have uh, more things to grab onto with Nick. Yes, that's, that was, that's, that was, <laughs> that's what I was setting you up for. Uh, <laughs> Thanks to Yahoo for sponsoring the podcast. We much appreciate that. Um, so, is there any cheap quarterback we like here, boys? Yeah, or... cool. I, I, I got I got one for Grant that he might do. Is Grant doing the Haskins route with uh, oh, no. getting oh, against no. the Jets? They gotta like pay you the quarterbacks. No, oh, I'm, I'm not okay. doing it. But it's a question. I'm just asking. You know, it is a question. It's a legit question. I mean, you look at the slate and with every single viable quarterback, more and more priced up, and we have Haskins sitting there at 4,800. Do we think about it? And when we think about it, we vomit and say no, because <laughs> no, Haskins is just horrible. It's, it's as legit a question terrible. as like I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> like that's yeah. not as legit. That, that's not a legit. I question. mean, would we rather go Haskins or would we rather go Ryan Finley? Yeah, well, that's that's not even the Ryan. Yeah, I thought you were going to say. I mean, he get Fitz Magic against uh, you know the revenge spot against the Bills at home too, Grant. He's concussed, by the way. He may or may not play. We'll see as far as. But yeah. Oh, so we can play Josh Rosen for forty six hundred. Oh gosh, QB is ugly. Yeah, and this is, Guys, well, what no, about Big Dig Nick? There's eight billion people in the world. They can't find thirty competent people to throw footballs. It's insane. Or can they just keep getting injured? Well, no, this is a, this is this is what we do. We don't pay down a quarterback this week. Listen, you're just stuck paying up, and you probably finagle your way up to a guy like Lamar Jackson. That's probably what just happens because unless you're playing on Yahoo, you know, you play Kyler Murray. You just look at the site and you try and see if there's one cheap guy to play. But like I say, like DraftKings, uh, the cheapest quarterback I would actually consider playing. Maybe it's Kyle Allen at 5,300, but that's pretty gross. And then, like, if I'm not going with Kyle Allen, I guess it's like Derek Carr at 6.1K, which uh, I don't know if I even want to do that. Why, why does Yahoo hate Kyler Murray? 
Uh, I get this matchup is tough against San Fran. They price him down a little bit, but he was 20 bucks for a while earlier in the year. Now he's at 25 against San Fran. Again, not the most appealing of matchups, but that does seem like if he makes things work. Hey, Grant, your boy Josh Allen is only $30 on Yahoo. Is that appealing enough? or is this Lock, him, be... in. Lock him in against the Dolphins. We've already seen him once before. But, uh, no, the more interesting guy is, like, is this right? Is this happening? Is he really 5,300? Oh, no. Who are you talking about? Kyle Allen against Atlanta? Yeah. Yeah, but the thing. Well, okay, so are you well, still well, welcome, welcome to the podcast. Once? I already mentioned him. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned him on Yahoo. No, I mentioned fifty three hundred. I said that. Yeah, oh. rolling in favor of Mangone. No, that's fine. Uh, you're sick. I didn't want to catch it. So did you just catch years. all the Carolina touchdowns? Like they have a, currently have a twenty eighteen total, and we're gonna we'll talk CMC in a second. You just play Allen and CMC and lock in all the Carolina touchdowns against you know a terrible Atlanta defense. Yeah, that well, has no I mean, offensive play- points anymore. Play Samuel or play DJ Moore. Both of them are too. We'll get to wide receiver later. But Kyle Allen, like, I know he hasn't put up big points totals since his first week. Yeah. Um, but, like, still, 5,300 versus Atlanta any week is just silly for any quarterback. I mean, Fitzpatrick, the greatest quarterback in the league, graded. Or Rosen, his backup against Atlanta. I'd still think about it. Like, they're that bad on the defensive. And, yes, Drew Brees just had a rough outing. It can happen to anyone at any given time, but most weeks, any competent offense can put up big numbers against them. So Kyle Allen at 5,300 is super cheap. And then what do we think Nick Foles is going to do in this offense? We saw Minshew, who granted has played well. Is he as good of a quarterback as I don't Foles? want any. No. What's the, what's, the, what's the point? What's my incentive to play Foles against Indy? Uh, Indy's a team that's going to want to keep the ball on the ground, most likely run the clock. Uh, I like the fact that it's in a dome. I'll give you that. I don't really like the pieces he has to throw the ball to. He's not necessarily too cheap. I don't know, man. Going, are you in on Foles? My first thought is, nah. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to pass on uh, BDN season this week. Uh, I'll wait and see what happens. Well, uh, yeah, and you know, Grant does bring up an interesting point as far as out, and that's probably like depending on later on the week as far as how uh, how much value does or does not open up. Um, but it, it, it is an interesting way for like a cash game perspective, just to lock in all those Carolina touchdowns. If you're going to pair them with CMC and, and if you get like a receiving touchdown from CMC, that's just the, I mean, yeah, that'll just, yeah, it's beautiful, obviously, but, uh, his ceiling is not necessarily been reached, but with the normal salary cap and he's fairly cheap, then go anything else as far as uh, quarterbacks, or you want to talk about CMC and other running backs? No, I think I'm down to, uh, talk about guys that are going to get me 27 points at 10.5 K and be okay with it. Yeah. Remember back in the day we used to do three X that's not three X and that's like less than a one fifty scale. If you're doing that math, just kind of throwing it out there. All good Dean. We don't need that crap. (laughs) (laughs) Also people do the whole point per dollar thing in baseball and you know how that is. That's, that's, I mean, that's dumb. You can't, that's for pitchers. You can kind of sort of somewhat do it for hitters. It's ridiculous. But yeah, Yeah. that's yeah. I mean, it's all, it's entirely arbitrary based on what the minimum salary is. Like over on Yahoo, a ten dollar guy is almost certainly going to be the highest point per dollar play compared to a forty dollar Christian McCaffrey. No, what matters is when your players put up points compared to how the other players are on the slate. Last week, Christian McCaffrey was a very, very safe play, and there were a lot of shaky. Of course, plays he was a safe play. Nobody said he wasn't a safe play. But there play. were a lot of shaky plays, so there was a lot of security in him. <laughs> okay. Um, no. Yeah, I mean, he's, he was a fine play. Like, nobody's ever saying CMT's not a good play. He's just a matter of how much he costs the rest of your lineup. Um, so, this week, Mango, we're just going to plug in CMT and move on? Yeah, I mean, he's definitely a good idea to plug in. I mean, what other running backs are you jumping for joy about? Like, I don't love a lot Dalvin of running Cook. backs here. Yeah, Dalvin Cook's fine against Denver, 8.9K. I don't mind him. He, he's in play. He's in the conversation. I, I think he's a, a decent play. It's McCaffrey. It's Dalvin Cook. And then after Dalvin Cook, it's like, okay, Josh Jacobs at 6.9. I'm pretty intrigued against the Bengals, especially with that team total. That's uh, Those are probably the three guys in the top end range that I'm looking at. But uh, I'm not that interested in Zeke. Uh, I don't think he's that that good this season. Leonard Fournette, I mean, I'd rather just buy him on FanDuel. I think he had a pretty dumb price tag over there. Um, Kamara, no thanks. Uh, Le'Veon Bell, questionable. Like, you know, he's just been dealing with the injuries all season long. He hasn't been that good. And I'm not buying it on the Jets because, Dean, what do I say? When you buy, uh, you know, when you buy the running back, you're buying the offensive line too. And uh, I'm not <laughs> buying that Jets offensive line. That's uh, disgusting. So. I love you say that like it's like this great eye-opening moment. Oh, wow. That's right. No one, but no one 
one talks about it, Dean. Nobody talks about it. Listen. Nobody Michael, ever talked. I talked about the offensive line for Dallas when uh, when Smith was out, you know, months ago on this very podcast. People talk about <laughs> offensive lines all the time. Not it's one of the much. most important things in sports. Yeah, but not as much. Everyone, it's not as much. Uh, if you listen to all the podcasts, people are not talking about how offensive line play is really important. People are talking about Michael Thomas is the best receiver in the NFL, but if you change Michael Thomas with pretty much any top-end receiver, it's going to be the same production. It's because the Saints situation I don't think that's true. I, I totally agree with that 100%. I mean, I don't think running like running backs, receivers, like not that they don't matter, but um, what matters most is the line and you know having the opportunity. That's what's the most important thing. Great. All right. Well, in any case, um, I'll still play Le'Veon Bell. He's going up against a team in Washington that's not very good, not very good on the defense, and yet they're somehow favorites. I still don't understand that. But in any case, like Washington's giving up a ridiculous amount of targets to opposing running backs so far this season. So that plays out perfectly for Bell. Like 7-2, the only reason I don't want to play him is because Josh Jacobs is sitting there going up against Cincinnati at 6.9K, which is way, way too – Way too small of a price tag for him in this matchup. He's been playing great all season long outside of like a two week stretch when everyone played him against Casey in Minnesota. But he's like, he's got the touchdown equity. He's got the game script with a 29 point team total. They're going to run him constantly here. They're going to be ahead in all likelihood. Josh Jacobs is probably the best play. And everyone's going to be on him. Dalvin Cook is the interesting one because Dalvin Cook's almost having as good of a season as CMC is. Like, he's consistently, every single week, in around, like, the mid-20s range. I mean, CMC is better, but, like, he's got a decent matchup here going up against Denver that is drastically worse versus, or is worse versus the run, in my opinion, worse versus opposing running backs. They give up a massive target share of 23% to opposing running backs, and Cook's heavily involved in the passing game has seven, six or seven targets in each of the last three games and seven games, I think, so far this season, or six games so far this season. Cook is making me think about not playing the Cavern because this isn't a Saquon Barkley scenario again. Cook is pretty much going to get 20 points here. Christian McCaffrey's That's probably not going enough, to get, obviously. He's going to get at least 20 points. Yeah. Honestly, I'm probably going to make some lineups where I end up playing both of them, which is going to be tough considering how little value there's out here, which – leads me to playing Kyle Allen quite a bit and pairing him with Curtis Samuel. So I really like Cook. As you get further down here, I mean, Marlon Mack going up against Jacksonville is not the worst idea in the world. He just pointed everyone last week. But Jacksonville can't catch footballs. I don't care. <laughs> it, 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 that's fine. He's 6,400, and he's yeah. getting 20 rushes a week. There's a difference between a guy getting 10 rushes a week and three catches. Like It's pricing. It's opportunity. And if he, even if he can't catch footballs, it doesn't matter. He still has upside. Same thing with Derrick Henry. Look at what happened with him last week. Um, but the interesting thing is going to be, obviously, if Freeman doesn't play, Brian Hill becomes chalk. But a guy that, like, he's going up against a very good run defense. He's been decent recently. He doesn't catch footballs, Dean. You know, he's old. Who am I talking about? Um, Frank Gore? I don't know. Adrian Peterson. Oh, <laughs> that was my second. All I heard was he's old and he doesn't catch footballs, and Frank Gore comes to my mind. Um, two future Hall of Famers, by the way. Good for them. Yeah, two uh, first ballot Hall of Famers. Yeah. Uh, look, Peterson probably continues to get volume. Uh, not a sexy play, obviously. Is it, isn't, the the rookie, isn't the rookie back, guys? Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, back. Geis might be a – Yeah, just double-checked it. Geis is back and Thompson will probably be back. Yeah, that brings up the point. Geis. 4-7? I mean, it, I mean, why would they run him to the ground like right away, though? Because like it's in, Washington. He's a rookie and who cares? Geis, Geis, baby. Well, he's coming back from injuries. Wait, we're just going to let that go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, I mean, like, it's still – Washington. He's a perfect pivot off of Brian Hill. Like, I guess we have to wait and see what news they have to say about him, but he can get involved in the passing game. New York, while being a very good team versus a run, is still a team that gives up a heavy dose of targets to opposing running backs. Like, if guys is going to just immediately be into the offense, and they're already committed to running the ball because they're finally figuring out how to tank, like, we could potentially see him in for a pretty big game. 
Um, it looks really likely, again, that both Hooper is almost definitely out like two to four weeks, and Freeman, it looks like his foot is kind of beat up. So, And why, they, why is Atlanta going to push him out there? Why not let's see what's that, what Brian Hill has. So I think there's a pretty good chance both those, uh, both Hooper and Freeman are out. Um, by the way, side note, uh, Lattimore may be out, which is kind of a segue as far as our receivers because, uh, you know, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay versus New Orleans. Who's Lattimore going to cover? Possibly nobody. Uh, we'll talk about receivers in a second. Mango, and you have anybody else as far as running backs? And I, I had this one little thought, like, you know, it's probably stupid, but like the thing with Cook is like Minnesota, what do they really have to do against Denver to get this win? Like, of course, goofy things happen. We saw Atlanta beat New Orleans last week. Nobody really projected that. And their defense was awesome. Like they were buzzing. They had like a bunch of sacks against that New Orleans line in New Orleans, no less. Um, I'm going to put chalk that up to like a one-week goofy thing, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I think they got something special on the – Bourbon Street streets the night before. <laughs> the, the Saints did, you're saying, or Atlanta did? Atlanta didn't. Their defense went out, and apparently they were still, I don't know. I don't know what makes you good at football. I mean, yeah. The only thing I know is Adderall. I mean, I, I've, had, I've had a hurricane in New Orleans, and that's not going to help you play football any better. I'll tell you that much. Um, I mean, probably not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe for a play or two, and then you're like, all right, I'm, this, I'm done. I'm tapped out. Um Mango, you got anybody else as far as running backs? Because how about J.D. McKissick? I mentioned him a passing. Like, he might be the guy in Detroit. He had 70% snaps last week. Um, you know, good receiver of the ball, and who knows what's going to happen with Stafford. But this is one of the, the, the quote-unquote cheapies that we have to keep our eye on throughout the week. Yeah, you got to keep your eye on him. But uh, it's like I'm not really taking a stand on any of these guys right now. Like, if you forced me to pick, I'd take Brian Hill right now. That's the guy I would go with. But um, I'll wait till Friday when we got to get the injury reports. And then from there, I'll listen to what's going on. And then Sunday morning, I'll get news and I'll track the news and figure out who's getting most of the carries. That's probably what you want to be doing. You know, stay close to Twitter. You know, so get why, why listen to this podcast? You get, nothing is helpful on the night. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, I'm just talking about with these cheap running backs. Like, this situation, it's one that isn't, like, that clear right now. Like, we can talk about other things that are more clear, but this isn't clear right now. Like, we, we need to be really close to the news. Like, what's important is to tell the people, stay close on the Detroit news. Like, look at that. Make sure you're up to date on it. You know, do Twitter searches on all the players and see what's going on with the situation. That's more important information for me to tell you than to say which guy I like the most, in my opinion. Kramara, traditionally not a great, you know, the running back matchup versus Tampa is not that appealing, but Tampa much more vulnerable to the pass, and Kamara is a running back, but he's almost probably more dangerous when it comes to uh, catching the ball out of the backfield, so I think he's certainly in play as well, too. And he is fairly cheap. I prefer the game in the Dome, but like we said, as far as the totals in Vegas, that game is uh, the highest in the board, uh, from what I see, at 50-and-a-half as far as that total. And the World ones, of course, with a big team total just below, I think, uh, Oakland right now, which, again, that's uh, – the Oakland, Oakland Raiders are the biggest team total on the board, which is just awesome. Good for them. Uh, oh, I'm seeing San Francisco, then New Orleans, uh, for what it's worth. 29 for San Fran, 28 for uh, for the Saints. And, you know, tonight, San Fran, that may change, obviously, uh, Grant, because San Fran, we don't know if Kittle's going to be back. They lost Sanders as well, too. That offense looks terrible on paper. Also, Brita got hurt. So, again, Mingo is just going to say, keep an eye on the news and fire up Twitter, and we can't help you right now. No, no, yeah. Dean. I'm not. I'm not going to say that. But there are certain plays that, like, you really don't know what to say about it. Like, no, you're right. No, I'm, I'm just being a jerk. But I'm not being serious. At the same time, we don't know. There's, we can't give an answer in San Fran on Monday night. Who knows? I just think paying attention to news is so important, and people don't don't care to do it at 11:30 when we get so much important news. So I'd rather tell people that that's important. I agree, Grant. Yeah, dude, I, I was under the assumption that every single person who plays fantasy football pays attention to news. Okay. Yeah, well, that's definitely not true because Damian Williams was not 100% owning cash games last week. So that's not true. I mean, that's because he wasn't very good prior to last week. Oh, the trickle-down effect of that Williams news really destroyed my labs, but I'm, I don't want to talk about it. It did not work out for me. Your boy is broke. Um, Grant, any more running backs or you want to talk receivers? Devin Singletary going up against Miami. Okay. Like, it didn't work out great last week, but he still got seven targets in the passing game. Like, it was game script. They were behind pretty much the entire game, if I remember correctly. It was tight. The game was tight the whole way, pretty much. I mean, but they were behind. They had to throw for a significant portion of the game to try and catch up. But this week, they're going up against Miami, who 
just keeps crushing opponents. Am I right? They're, they're two and zero, two and zero, two and zero. They, they have, they have, they have, uh, they have two more wins in November than the New England Patriots. So there you go. They have more wins than Saquon Barkley had yards last week. That is sure. true. Are we playing Kellen Balage? Uh, I don't. I mean, he had a lot of touches. <laughs> Not all touches. The answer is no. Equal. That was a joke. Let's move on to wide receivers. His touches are created poorly. <laughs> no, well, his ability is created poorly. <laughs> Talk about receivers, Grant. I mean, we got Michael Thomas sitting there at 9-9. Oh, can't do it. He's going to get 15 targets. He's going to get 10 catches. Yeah. He's going to get 100 yards. He has a shot for two to three touchdowns. Sure. In tournaments, it's not the worst idea in the world, depending on what running back value opens up. But that's a tough price tag. To pay. I mean, last three weeks, he's averaging 28 points. Like, it's right in the CMC range. Like, depending on what value opens up, it could be real interesting. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to say it right away and just besmirch it. That, that's basically the whole concept is, like, uh, stay tuned to the news. If, like, there's a ton of value that opens up, then you can get those two studs. But continue, Grant. I apologize for interrupting. Then, uh, first time it didn't work out, hooray. Um, Godwin or Evans, one of them's probably going to go off. Like, this is a high-scoring game here. They're 5.5 point underdogs. Like, Either one of them, and I guess we didn't mention Ronald Jones after his big week this last week going up against New Orleans, but we both think that it's going to be more of a passing game. And, but Jones at 5.2K, we didn't really mention. He's an all right play. But Godwin or Evans, one of them is probably going to go off here. They're both priced significantly cheaper than Michael Thomas. So if you're looking for some upside, it's not a terrible idea. Galladay, if Stafford plays 6.7, is probably way too low for him. Um, like he's been putting up big numbers and maybe they, maybe they just priced him because he might not have Stafford at quarterback or maybe it's just cause it's a tough matchup, but the implied team total for them is high enough where like Galday could offer some massive value there. John Brown going up against Miami who like one of these days, John Brown's going to go off for a huge game. Just still waiting for it. Tyrell Williams. Don't look. High. What's his biggest catch of the year? It's 26 yards. Mangone? Um, I was building something for what we were going to talk about. What were yeah, you we heard your clicks. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was because I'm, I'm building something. I have a good idea, a thought coming up that I want to discuss. But uh, what were you saying? You're building, you're trying to build a Thomas McCaffrey lineup, aren't you? With like, let me guess this is what you're doing. With, with McKissick and, uh, and Hill. Is that what you're doing? No, I was I was trying oh. to see the non uh, McCaffrey lineup because the the idea here is um, what if we get enough like what if we get like three strong and again like I don't think we're getting three strong value running backs but like Josh Jacobs is like a really strong play at six point nine k but what if we get like two really strong value running backs in the four k range and let's say you can get Lamar Jackson and then you get Michael Thomas right so if I go Lamar Brian Hill McKissick Michael Thomas and Josh Jacobs this is fading Curse McCaffrey you're at four k per position. Um, and it, let's say you change Jacobs to McCaffrey, that makes it 3.125 per position, which then again, you'd probably have to go to like a 2.5K defense. You'd go to like a 2.5, I mean, not 2.5, let's say a 3K tight end. Then you're at two wide receivers at 3.5K. There's merit to maybe going like Michael Thomas as a receiver because he's he's basically like a running back right now. He's basically essentially a running back that you could roster at a wide receiver position. So uh, I'm just looking at like the, if you want to fade McCaffrey build, what would you do? And, uh, you know, that's probably an interesting route. Again, I think the only way you'd want to be fading McCaffrey is if you got a ton of strong, really good, cheap value running backs. Yeah, lineup construction is obviously super important, but yeah, uh, and you had to get three cheapies at running back to make it work. But I agree, Jacobs is a solid play too. I can't believe that one of you guys have taken advantage of that price there as far as Jacobs and describe him with a certain adjective. As far as the answer for John Brown, by the way, 38 yards, that was week one. So if you cut out week one, his biggest catch of the season, I think it's 28 yards. That seems, and he's still like been okay, which is the weird thing. Because he's like, getting a high volume of targets. Him and Beasley yeah, just it's like a different person. targets. But continuing on wide receiver, Samuel and Moore going up against Atlanta, 5,300 and 5,900. Sure. Which Samuel, like, we know he can go for a big downward field look. They're both getting 25% target shares or 22% target shares in their offense. Both of them are way too cheap. Tyrell Williams, we haven't seen a big game out of him for a little bit, but the Cincinnati defense, like, is bad against the run and bad against the pass. Like, Tyrell Williams could easily go off for a massive game here at 5,400. Like, he's had two bad ones in a row after coming back from injury. But, uh, like, he 
he's still a guy that has a bunch of touchdowns this season, just hasn't gone off for a big play recently because he went up against the Chargers and he went up against Detroit and just had a bad game in Detroit. Like, he's a good play. And, like, I went here last week. Am I going to go here again? Devontae Parker at 4,700. Like, he still put up 11 points last week. He's still the main guy in that offense. It's not an easy matchup, but he's got 10 targets. Really like Parker. And then last one, Debo Samuel, if uh, Sanders is out. Like, it's going up against Arizona. He's 4K. Like, we need some cheap stuff. I just threw him into a lineup that I made that has Thomas McCaffrey and Cook in it. So, he, he could potentially offer some nice value there, just 4K. Gage is six, uh, played 60% of the snaps last week. Actually, I, should, I rounded down 62% Russell Gage. Uh, you know, again, the injuries on Atlanta, he's not obviously a tight end, but Freeman being out and most likely being out, Hooper most likely being out. Uh, Gage is like with 3-2, I think I saw. He's a little bit interesting there as well, just depending on how things crack and unfold for Atlanta. you got to assume most likely they're playing from behind as well uh, when it comes to the game script. They're, what, 10-point dogs or so right now. Uh, Mango, give me some cheapies. Yeah, um, the wide receiver range, like the cheapies, I guess you're just looking at like more like the 5K-ish range. Those are maybe the guys I would end up going towards, like Christian Kirk again, Tyra Williams, Samuel, Boyd. Um, kind of living in that range seems like the route to go. Uh, Muhammad Sanu is kind of interesting with the Patriots. Uh, if you look at the game against Baltimore, he ended up getting 10 targets there. Um, again, like the, the game before that, though, uh, he had only uh, five targets. Or, sorry, he had 14 targets and then five targets. So, uh, you know, he's getting used enough. Uh, but, again, I don't know if it's definitely what I want to do. Grant brought up Parker. That's a guy that you can obviously consider because of the volume. Uh, there's not this, like, guy that just sticks out that's, like, an incredible play. And, uh, you know, that Niners news could be pretty big against Arizona. The only problem is playing the, you know, roulette game of which Niners receiver to go to. Well, it's, if there's somebody, somebody up there standing. But, like, yeah, well, on Monday night, obviously, we just were recording this on Monday night. Uh, didn't Samuel have a big game here, Mango? I believe he did, right? Uh, yeah, he was the guy, as as Booger would say, Debo Samuels is what he calls him. Uh, you know, adds the S at the end of the name. Hey, you had some Boogerisms. Let's, let's, let's share those. You mentioned that to us pre-show, and I said, hold it for the show, we might get into it. And there's the seamless segue. Share some yeah. Boogerisms with, the man- with us, Mangum. Yeah, so Booger said some dumb stuff, and I probably don't have them all here, but the, he kicked off the night with uh, Kyle Jujewski, I think is the way you say it, the fullback. That the is Niners. not the way you Yeah, I don't know how to say his name. I always say it weird. It's because the, the way it's worded. Use check, by the way, but go ahead. Use check. Yeah, it's because it's it's, it looks exactly like this guy I used to play football with. It looks just like the way his name was called. We called him Jujuski. So that's why I always say that. I don't know why. But uh, he is the most important part of the Niners offense. Uh, so apparently he is the key to that entire offense and the undefeated season going on. Even though Not, not George Kittle? Nope, nope. Not, not him, not Joey Bosa. Um, then here's another one he said. He said, you have to kick the field goal. I would kick the field goal. To me, it's a tie game. Uh, another one he said was, it's up to Kyle Shanahan to call a play. That was that was a beautiful one, and then uh, you know the, the the even better one I think was in overtime. Uh, Tyler Lockett was off the field for about like four or five plays. No mention of that. We're just like gushing over how Josh Gordon's like an amazing receiver. Um, he was all about that. And then the last one, and Dean, you'll you'll appreciate this a little bit. He says Booger said that the moment for the Niners kicker because he missed the game winning field goal. He says that the moment was too big for him. Oh game, no. On his, oh. No, I'm not done. Dean, I'm not done yet on his game tying field goal. But earlier when he made the when he made the game tying field goal, the just moment, big enough. The moment was just big enough. It, he was he was a big time clutch player, but when he missed <laughs> the one to win the game, the moment was too <laughs> big for him. Oh, I don't listen to Monday Night Football. I, I usually listen to stuff on mute or I'm listening to a podcast or something like that. So I don't hear a lot of football commentary. But that is just – that is just the worst. Uh, I mean, the last one is what really got me. The rest of it, you need context, I think. But well, most of it was bad. <laughs> so the moment was just right. It's like Goldilocks. It was just right when he tied the game. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he, he's not okay. – what is this? I, I, I use my leg and I kick a football. I don't yeah. know. How does this work? But by the way, he, 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 he tied the game on the last play of the game to bring it to overtime, right? Ridiculous. Like, uh, if, if you're talking about a pressure situation – I don't want to talk it. about Booger anymore. I don't like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so tilted that he said that is this, the dumbest, most like it's just like playing results based thinking. Uh, well, clearly, you know, he, the moment was too big for him. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> Grant, get, get us away from Bugger. What do you want to talk about? I mean, we, 
I guess we go to tight ends because we talked about wide receivers. Um, if Kittle plays, it's against Arizona. Oh, do, are they good against tight ends, Arizona? I haven't seen anything on that. If I remember correctly, the answer is an emphatic no. Okay. <laughs> um, but outside of him, like Waller obviously going up against Cincinnati. Cincinnati, I think, has actually been all right versus tight ends. But, like, Waller has just been – Crazy good so far this season. Zach Ertz, like, against New England, probably not a great play. Like, Mark Andrews, I'm not messing with this, all the tight ends. So, up top, it's really Waller and Kittle are the guys. When we get into the mid-tier, my favorite guy in the – probably my favorite tight end on the slate is Jared Cook. Good idea, bad idea, Dean. I don't think that's crazy. Uh, but the thing on Andrews just drives me nuts. Uh, I, I, I want to say – I saw us on Twitter. I, don't, I can't cite anybody, but uh, I might be butchering this, but I'm fairly certain that Andrews ran just 16 routes. Uh, he was on the field for 51% of his snaps, and I think he was targeted like eight times. Uh, so yeah. similar to Hollywood Brown week one? <laughs> well, I mean, he blocks a good bit too. Well, usually when he's out there, they're more likely to pass the ball, right? But, uh, yeah, I'm seeing eight targets, uh, six receptions, and I think it was just 16 routes. So, if he's on the field and it's a pass play, half the time the ball is going to Mark Andrews. He's been awesome. Uh, but that just seems like a really tight needle to, to thread. Yeah. He's also not expensive. He's, he's not cheap. But, like, he's also – you know, you can point to the scoreboard and say, well, it works sometimes. Mangone, tight ends, what are your, what's your thoughts as far as Cook? Yeah, so um, I, I think uh, you guys brought up the top end guys. They're all really good plays. If if Kittle ends up being out, uh, that man Dwelly, I think his name is, uh, he's 3.5K or 3.4K. He's going to obviously be intriguing against the Cardinals. Uh, if Kittle ends up being out, he was doubtful for Monday night. Uh, I like to call on Andrews. Uh, you know, Waller's fine, but I don't know if I'm going to end up going to him. Ertz, his price, uh, you know, it's great, but it's New England. I'll probably end up passing. I don't mind the Jared Cook call. I haven't really been on Jared Cook that much this season. I don't think a end up going there because the price seems a little too expensive for me but the guy i think i'll go to and uh, if you watch sunday night football you saw kyle rudolph feast against the cowboys and uh, if you look at the stats here on the season the cowboys if you look points per game they are sixth in the league allowing 14.9 points per game to the tight end position uh grant's guy jared cook uh the the, the bucks they're allowing 19.9 points per game to opposing tight ends but dallas they're they're allowing a lot and uh the guy going up against them is uh tj hawkinson and we know that uh the lions they like to throw the ball a lot obviously uh, let's say matthew stafford's back that's gonna be really nice for him and uh, i think he could be a really really nice uh gpp play to go to i uh i can just hear jamino's voice in my head because i hear him say it all the time whenever cook is mentioned and you see his picture uh, and I don't know if you guys catch the reference or not, but he looks like Beetlejuice from the Howard Stern Show. <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys aware of Beetlejuice or no? Not the one where you say his name three times. That's a different Beetlejuice. You guys don't say it again. Do, don't say his name again. Beetlejuice. <laughs> oh, gosh, you're screwed tonight. Um, well, hold on, Grant, you ready for this? Candyman, 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 Candyman. Is it five times? How many times? It's it three candy? times. And you have to say it in front of a mirror, Dean. So it doesn't well, matter. Well, how do you know? I'm, I'm, I'm so vain. I record the podcast right in front of a, right in front of a mirror. I, I actually have my hair right as next to speak. me too. I can, I can see myself. I have like fifteen mirrors in my basement. I'm I just sure like that why. you caught the Candyman reference. I'm impressed. Well, of course I've seen Candyman. Well, Mangone hasn't. Yeah, that, that Mangone was my, hasn't seen any. Yeah, I was. I mean, listen, I was sitting on the bench if I was healthy or not for that segment. <laughs> he doesn't know what Candyman is. Does Man, has Mangone seen Beetlejuice? Oh, please tell me you have, Mangone. I say he hasn't. I don't think he has either. The, the, the Howard Stern variety or the Michael Keaton variety. No Beetlejuices in his life. I, I oh. have seen Beetlejuice, man. Wow. Yeah, actually, right. I watched it in the last year. I didn't watch the whole one, but I watched like the the main scene when you first meet Beetlejuice. The main scene? I don't know. Like the, it's a, when you first meet Beetlejuice, it's a big scene. <laughs> no, and you, it was such a big scene that you're like, ah, I'm gonna change the channel now. All right, we got to the good part. Now let's go. Gosh, <laughs> dang it! Man. I don't. In I, don't case. I, I, I didn't want to watch the full movie. I don't want to tell you. I just was scrolling and I saw it and I was like, oh, nice. And then I got bored. So I said, okay, gonna go tight to ends. <laughs> we got we got more. I like the Hawkinson call. He's another. Dean just segued from me when I wasn't finished with my stuff. Hawkinson's a good call. Um, I wasn't really like about him. Beetlejuice. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Greg Olson going up against Atlanta. Fantastic play at 3,900. Atlanta has not been great versus opposing tight ends, offering a very large target share there. So I like Greg Olson, a guy that just came off a big game. And then one that I'm not happy about that is going to hit, I think, 
No offense. Oh gosh. You live in the I area. I don't, I don't, Are people I don't excited about Fanta? No one's excited about Fanta. He sucks. I mean, he had that preposterous like seventy-yard touchdown. It was a, like nobody wanted to tackle him. It was. It, it was. It was. He still had forty yards outside of that on his other two catches here. I know, but I'm just saying people are going to point to the overall number of like his output, and you know, it was an outlier. But go, that's and, fine. He dropped some long balls, and I think one against KC he caught, and they called it back for a penalty. But in any case, he's like his price tag. I don't like, but the matchup I do. He's going up against Minnesota, who's offered or get, giving up the most targets to opposing tight ends in the entire league. He has a new QB in the offense who we've seen target him a whole lot. Um, he's got 12 targets over the last two games. This game is probably one where they're going to be coming from behind. Like, Noah Fant is a great play at tight end. Like, I don't want to pay up at tight end this week if Kittle's not on the slate. So it's going to be Cook, it's going to be Olsen, it's going to be Fant, and it's going to be Hawkinson. It sounded, if I was hearing him correctly, it sounded like Van Gogh was saying Noah to Fant, actually. Is that uh, correct? I, yeah, I thought so. But then I, I, I thought the Vikings were really bad against tight ends. Then I looked at this chart that I hadn't have up, and I was like, oh, wait, they haven't been – they've been uh, not the greatest. So uh, I was surprised. I thought they had been pretty good against tight ends. I, I think so. it's, it's been a lot of it has been competition, um, who they faced, if I remember correctly. Like, yes, they went up against Kelsey. But outside of that, they went up against old man Witten. They went up against old man Vernon Davis. Hawkinson was fine. Nerds was fine. Ingram was out of the game they had played. They went up against Burton. Waller was a good tight end, and Hooper was good. Like the the guys that have done or are good tight ends have done very well against them, and then they faced awful opponents outside of that, and they haven't allowed a lot of touchdowns if I remember correctly, which they don't allow a lot of touchdowns overall. So I think they're like 16th, 17th, and overall tight end points against, but they've actually been not great versus tight ends in terms of giving up receptions and giving up yards. Hey, so I, 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 I will say I read, I read an article on Noah Fant like when it was early in the season when I was doing a showdown slate because I wanted to get some more detail on him. And Vic, Fan, Vic Fangio was quoted saying that uh, Noah Fant could be a cornerstone piece to this franchise for years to come. So um, that's that's He's like a future though. Kyle Ushek is what you're saying. Yeah, pretty much, man. Uh, you know, you have Noah Fant, you, uh, you're an undefeated team. Let me. So uh, we talked about the Dolphins being on this slate uh, against the Bills. We talked about the, the Jets and Washington playing against each other. You know, touchdown equity is important. You know what team has the lowest team total in the slate by, like, two points <laughs> as, of, as of Monday night? Sounds like the Broncos. Yeah, it's, it's the Broncos. Broncos. <laughs> the Broncos are not going to score. But uh, it's fine. When you're getting, paying 3700 for a tight end, like, uh, yeah, just check it out. Vikings, you know how many touchdowns they've allowed to tight ends? Four. The answer is, I believe, zero. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, they're due? To give one up to fans? But, I mean, they've allowed the least amount of touchdowns, but they've also allowed the second most targets, the third most um, receptions, and I think like the eighth most yards. Is this so, the nonsense portion of the podcast? Yeah, is this? No, <laughs> no, like I'm saying like the Vikings, touchdown regression is going to happen. They're the only team in the league not to allow a touchdown to a tight end. But why would it happen against Denver? Who's got the, a 14 team total? I'm not saying it's going to happen against Denver. I'm saying it very easily could. I'm saying there's massive positive regression. I need to look into more of their scheming in the red zone, but I don't think there's anything that would suggest that they shouldn't allow a tight end. I think the week Waller went against them, he went for like 13 receptions or 12 receptions for. 90 or, or 100 yards. I, I got to check this out. Yeah, I do. Actually, that was early in the season in the Dome, I believe. He actually 134 did. yards. Dean, yeah. some people have said on Twitter, it's math, man. You just wouldn't understand it, okay? Yeah, you idiot. I don't get the reference, but, like, I can see. Is that something Cardi would say? Or? <laughs> uh, it's kind of something he said to Graham. Yeah. I, he didn't say that exactly, but I'm, I'm kind of uh, adamant. And then he took here. back his, his so-called <laughs> comment. Grant, you wouldn't understand. A running back can't average 5.3 <laughs> yards a carry. Looking you're back not like at a, it, you're not like a, a former accountant or anything. You don't know what yeah, calculators are. I, I, was, I wasn't trained to be a statistician in college. <laughs> I say all this, and I was kind of sort of I'm, I'm, like I was on the fence of the conversation, but I understood a bit what he was saying at the same time. Yeah, I don't. I'm, you know, of course, I was on the fence because why am I going to take a stand? I was just waiting for McCaffrey to get injured and him to take the W. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, such a jerk move. If that happens. <laughs> 
Well, the other thing is, if like if he would have like extended you know his arms and scored a touchdown, people would be like, "Oh, suck at Cardi. He got you know thirty six points based off that one goofy play in the last second, which is like you can't predict that situation happening. But uh, yeah, that's just the way Twitter works. I suppose. By the way, congrats, John Serbian, hundred K tonight. Really? Yeah, yeah, dude. For basketballs? Dude. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, guy's good at yeah. basketballs. I don't know him by that uh, by his uh, what the, the, that name. Like I just know him as JSU. I don't. Is he? I, I think he only is called John Serbian when he's in trouble. But he's not in trouble. He won 100 K. So congratulations. Well, JSU Rab is his name, and it's it's not it's capital J Surab is actually what it is. But everyone calls him JSU. I don't know why, but I still call that's him. that's his screen name. Yes, but it's not supposed to be JSU. It's J Surab. Is actually what his screen name is. Oh, Everyone calls really? It GSU. Yeah, oh. no one knows that. Oh, that's inside information. I didn't know that. We should probably get back to football and end this. <laughs> JSU, by the way, uh, well, JSU rap is on the uh, premium stuff, premium content. If you guys are not aware, he does crunch time for NFL on Sundays. Uh, there you go. Shout out to the premium content. Of course, he does other stuff as well, too. He does crunch time for basketball, where we probably talked about, I presume, some of the players he liked. Uh, going into the slate, and he won under K, so good for him. Mangone, is this the nonsense portion of the show? What, what, what are we doing now? We gotta do. We gotta do our game, and then give out your tweet. This is nonsense now. Uh, I'm not looking forward. I think you guys are gonna be mean. You guys are big jerks. And well, Trav did because he can't handle no, no November apparently. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I had to hit you back. So, well, we'll see. I don't know. I don't know if that mean, but it's. I just like how you're adding. You said I had to hit you back as if you came up with a tweet. Yeah, it's always me. Mango no. never comes. That, that's the thing. Like the one thing about me not winning is that like now the pressure's on. I got to come up with a tweet. I can never like yield and say unless it's you know Mango losing. Which we, but just a side note, me and uh, Grant have something in the works for when Mango. Oh, wins. it is good. Yeah, and when I when I don't lose, one of you guys will have to have it week seventeen. Uh, I don't know if it would work that way. <laughs> uh, it's going to work that way. It's going to happen. We're just going to reverse it on you. Mango, I guarantee you are. I will give you 33. I will give you three to one odds. Or oh. Three, four, a, one. Three, one one pays three odds that you lose this week. 33% chance you lose this week. That I lose this week. I, I want to see my picks first before I go in. I, I'm not feeling that All confident. right. Well, I'm the Jordan flu game style, man. You well, we're doing the same thing as last week. Dean, you go first. I go second. And Dean, you better be ready to be on the clock here. Snake draft style. You pick the first one, and then I pick the second one. We set the positions, and then yeah. the going goes. And it's point per dollar, best, worst team tweets out. Is it worth just taking the generic named Brian Hill? Just locking him in and getting some value? I mean, if, if you think that Freeman's for sure out, it's not a bad call. Or I can just take CMC and just lock in those 27 points, no more, no less, and just say, come get me. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and do that. I like this spot against Atlanta. I mean, come on. It's, um, a, it's a great spot. Yeah. Um, and I know Atlanta's defense looked good last week, but, you know, good for them. Uh, it's, it's probably one of those two guys. I want to – you know, come get me. Come get me. I'm CMC. All right, I'm going Lamar Jackson. Ooh. All right. Uh, well, I'm I'm taking Josh Jacobs here at six point nine. Yeah, okay. I was thinking about nice. that. I really should have. Yeah, that's that's. I'm feeling good right now. And now I get a quarterback. Yep. Hmm. Let's see here. Grant, should we explain the game while while Mangon is thinking? Because maybe yeah. So it's snake draft format. The first two people pick, and they set the positions. Third person goes, picks two guys in a row, and it's point per dollar cumulative of your two guys. Loser has to tweet out a tweet that they cannot respond to, like any reply, or reply to anything, or anything of the like. I really hope – and, like, of course, you guys are going to tell me my tweet in a second. And I hope I don't uh, – well, I mean, I don't want to at people. There's some no, people I don't want to you've got two at. options. Okay. I don't want to – you know, I don't want to be that jerk, but, okay, we'll see. I so, All right. I think, I, I, uh, I'm fine making fun of myself. I think my quarterback from a point per dollar perspective is going to be buying time. It's going to be Kyle Allen. Yeah, that's probably a smart move there. I Uh, you went Kyle Allen for the block. I wanted the Carolina team, but go ahead. Yeah, that was a smart. That would have been a smart move, Dean. Good for you. Uh, I'm going with Dalvin Cook is my RB. Oh, I don't like. Yeah, I think I'm better. I I feel good about that. Who who do you have Cook and who's your quarterback? Cook and Lamar Jackson. Oh, hmm. All right. 
So you got to pick a quarterback. I know. Allen was the play. Man, go on, you big jerk. Yep. I didn't want you, you to can take Derek Carr and get a piece of that 29-point total. Uh, yeah, I don't mind Carr. He's in play. No BDN for me, I don't think. We don't really know who the quarterback's going to be so for some of these teams. Uh, I mean, Dean, I'm trying to help you. I think you should go Drew Brees. I'm looking at Brees. I'm giving him it's, a game. It's, a, it's an absolute pass funnel spot. They're great against the running back. So anything that's done by Kamara is probably in the receiving game. They're bad against tight ends. So Drew Brees now has more than one option. And Michael Thomas is probably going to go ham. I wish he was in the dome. wish he was a little bit cheaper. Uh, I, I was told uh, that there's a quarterback controversy. They're not, not going to replace him with Bridgewater. <laughs> If they it's do, not. then I've lost all faith in John or Sean Payton. No, it's not going to happen. I'm just making that up. Um, yeah, I, I, again, I wish he was a tick cheaper, I suppose. But uh, I'm sorry, my strategy has been derailed. My man going, and I'm throwing off a little bit. Indianapolis, we don't really know who's going to be the quarterback. We don't want any part of that anyway. That's nonsense. Dude, you do this every single week. Well, at the same time, I'm also kind of like giving it, you know, advice on the slate, sort of, maybe. <laughs> Team, we're the analysts. We're the ones actually giving advice on the slate. All you have to do is we're listen to our picks. <laughs> I'm the quote unquote, I'm the host. Don't put me in a box. I can analyze things too, in a pinch. Um, yeah, I would take Watson, but that Baltimore secondary is better now. Like it's it's healthier and looks better, and the price is kind of priced up a little too much for my liking. I like him for tournaments, but I, I hate taking your. You know, you're definitely. You're just derailing me on purpose, but I think I'm taking Breeze. That's what we're going I've, with. I've literally – I've tried to help you multiple times, and every <laughs> single time you go against me, you lose because of it. I don't think you're uh, fully authentic because we're opponents. Dean, you wouldn't tell your opponent how to defeat you. Dean, how badly do I want Trav to lose just so we can do the thing <laughs> we have planned? <laughs> That's a good point. This is, this is a handicap match right now. Listen, <laughs> I'm still okay with it. I'm going to take you boys down. Two on one. You better right. have somebody come out of the locker room to help you. But would, would, it, would it be the first time someone was two on one of me with a steel chair, Dean? <laughs> That's a callback to our pre-show conversation that nobody gets. <laughs> Are you ready for your tweet? No. You want me to read it though? I have, I have two different ones for you. Oh well, fire away. I I haven't heard. This is these are cold. So go ahead. All right. Hey, at Rosie O'Donnell, big oh. fan for many many years. I don't normally do this, but my prom is coming up next weekend. And I was wondering if you'd be no. the pleasure of going with me. <laughs> I know it's a long shot, but I've been in love with you since I was 14. <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay, well, that's, you're going to have to take the other then. All right, the other I one. Mean, I don't want to – it's not like I'm making fun of her. I, I don't want to make fun of anybody. No, like, but maybe you're a huge Rosie fan. Yeah, okay. I'm not having a prom, prom going. I'm not 18. <laughs> How does she Rosie know? She knows. She sees an almanac. She doesn't know your age. <laughs> she knows anybody that has the almanac I've seen Back to the Future and they're not 18 years old. Well, maybe you're a substitute teacher that needs a prom date. <laughs> maybe you just are big bar- the substitute big- teachers don't go to prom. <laughs> <laughs> they might <laughs> chaperone. So I mean, you're chaperoning. Chaperones don't need dates. <laughs> oh come on! Every chaperone needs a date. No one's going to problem alone, man. Everyone's got to get get. Oh my date. god! Because the only one better or worse? Oh, it's had the plumber over this weekend, and he found four pans of glitter in my shower drain. Apparently, my weekend job of dancing up on stage at insert strip club name here on amateur night really ended up costing me. Oh, well, I guess my gl- stage name of Glitter was apt, and James Harden, you owe me $25 still. And you have to add James Harden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's better. Like, I'd prefer to do that one. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I, don't wanna, I don't want to make fun of Rosie O'Donnell. Like, I don't the, wanna, the thing you know? I like about the James Harden one is it's got, like, a DFS, uh, you know, vibe to it, so people yeah. will definitely be liking that thing all day. These are both good, by the way. They're both good submissions. I, I, like, I like the premise of both of them. Uh, I, I I can appreciate them for the art they are, but I, I can't appreciate them because, no, I'm putting in a, I'm putting a predicament I'm not uh, particularly happy about. Um, oh, uh, do I get the name of the strip club? Um, what what did mean, you come up with? Did you have anything or no? I mean, just, Deja Vu is the obvious one. It's a big oh. chain, but... Um, Jiggles is the first thing that came to mind for me, but okay, go ahead. <laughs> if you want actually, to have Jiggles, the strip club, Is that free. actually the name of one? Oh, everything's got to have a name. 
I, I just got a flashback to a friend of mine. I, either that he was at a strip club that was named Jiggles or he had a lap dance from a dancer named Jiggles. I don't recall which was the case, but nonetheless, uh, we can figure that out off air, I suppose. I'm Not also looking up names of, um, <laughs> of strip clubs in Nashville. There's huh. Deja Vu. There's Pure Gold, Crazy Horse. Sure. Well, there's Menages, which probably yeah. refers to a menage. Sure. I mean, I, James Harden hits a lot of threes. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm trying to think what the – like Crazy Horse is the name of a club too, I believe. Crazy uh, Horse is the name of a casino. It's the name of a club and it's the name of a strip club. It's a versatile company, that crazy. It's all under one umbrella. Is it? Wow, impressive. No, I don't think so. I just <laughs> – I think it's just everybody uses it for whatever purpose they see fit. I don't know. Um but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like a live music. You can see a crazy horse here in Nashville. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's the one I gotta take because I'm not gonna. I'm not here to make fun of Rosie O'Donnell. Is it making fun of her? It's kind of mocking her. Yeah, and like yeah, it's kind of mocking. You're kind of. We, we could have put Lena Dunham instead. Yeah, and same same principle. <laughs> I just don't like her. A lot of people don't like her for some reason. I mean, whatever. I've been, I've been, I've been, uh, there's definitely a reason behind it. I mean, Rosie <laughs> O'Donnell hasn't done anything to make me not like her at all. <laughs> I'm curious to get your reasonings. She was fantastic. It was, uh, what was it, Betty and the Flintstones, Viva Rock Vegas? That was one of the worst movies of all time. Like, Disagree. Real. You did not enjoy that. I refuse oh, I most Starring Rick did. Moranis as Barney and John Goodman as Fred Flintstone. You did yes, I love John Goodman. I like John Goodman too, but even John Goodman himself will tell you that was a terrible, terrible movie. I don't think he will because he doesn't want to just besmirch the twenty-five percent Rotten Tomatoes rating. Twenty-five percent is that the audience score or is that the uh, is that the critic score? That's the critic score. The audience score is twenty-one percent. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> the audience thought it was worse than the critics. <laughs> that was a terrible movie. Uh, I was so excited when they're like, "Oh wow, are they going to make a Flintstones live action?" Awful. I loved um, it. I loved it. So I'm just stalling, but yeah, we're going to go with the James Harden one, I suppose. Uh, Grant, tell the people again, if they stuck around this long, we appreciate it. Uh, we warn you, this is all nonsense here at the end, but we want somebody to win a t-shirt. How are they going to win a t-shirt this week? Weirdest restaurant stories. I mean, you can have getting kicked out for vomiting, some random guy joining your table under false pretenses, someone refusing to leave your table, apparently pissing off a waitress that she quits in mid, mid, mid service. Um, if you're Travis Mango, he didn't actually make her quit, did he? I don't even know. Uh, she didn't quit, but she uh, yeah, she passed the table. <laughs> yeah. So well, you're trying all these loopholes, man. Mango, you can't buy wings. You, you can't afford twelve bucks worth of wings. Seriously. I mean, it's it's about trying to beat the challenge, Dean. I'm just trying to. You gotta respect the hustle, man. Come on. And I, in fact, beat the challenge. So second, Mango. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. Hey, yeah. I got fired as a waiter. You want to know why I got fired? In an email, <laughs> was described. <laughs> as too sassy sassy somebody oh called gosh. me too sassy all right that's a good one to end on yeah i was a smart ass i mean i was just having fun and just kind of goofing around but like don't call me a smart ass call me other things but sassy i am not you are sassy. sassy sir no i am i'm i'm a lot of things you're a firecracker you are <laughs> sassy i'm a firecracker before i'm sassy uh man going you have a final thought as far as this late oh man let's get out of here Right, well, Mangone's got to go to sleep. He was supposed to get a nap. He didn't get one earlier, so he's cranky. I'm, so, I'm just happy, Mangone, you made it at the end of the pod. I appreciate that. Thank you for powering through. I'm sure the listeners appreciate it as well. Grant's about to kill over as well because uh, this, we're recording this, like, what, 1 o'clock in the morning, depending on where you're at? Uh, I'm, I'm, it's it's, it's midnight right, right now. It's Mangone's, like, 2 in the morning. Yeah, I middled it. We're doing time zones, yeah. I, people don't care about time you're, zones. Right? Well, you're at 1 in the morning. Yeah, that's what I said. I we're all in different time zones. Neat. Grant, final thought? I've got no. I, I guess no offense going for 20. 20 arts? 20, 20 DK points. <laughs> All right. Well, I look forward D, to talking D, D, to James quick, Harden tomorrow. Re, yeah, yeah. Real quick, it's 1 a.m. Your, your shift starting soon here? <laughs> yeah, tell James Harden I said hello. I, I got to – Jiggles is covering for me. <laughs> we got to get out of here. I hope you all enjoy our nonsense. I hope you all understand this is a first look podcast. That's why we don't have to get too far into the numbers. This is not the last podcast you listen to in DFS. It's the first, first podcast you listen to in DFS. He's Mango and he's Grant. Thank you to Yahoo for sponsoring the show. I'm Dean. We're out of here. Holler. <laughs>